we get to menopause, we're incredibly wise, we know so much. We really need to be placing a huge value on that and get past these really outdated ways of thinking about menopause, which is you know, the end of fertility, but certainly the start of a, a great period in our lives. It's about looking after yourself and, and often women when they get to perimenopause or menopause have spent a lot of time looking after other people. We do have to put the oxygen mask on ourselves before we help anyone else. So any time we take to look after ourselves is a good thing. Menopause is actually just a single day in your life and it's a 12 months after your last period. And perimenopause, peri just means around the time of. So perimenopause is the time leading up to menopause uh, and the first 12 months after the final period. 51% of all Australians will go through menopause, a natural part of life. But experts say women and gender diverse people still face significant barriers to treatment, including stigma, misinformation and a lack of GPs who feel confident prescribing medication. I think there's a variety of different uh, levels of skill uh, amongst GPs. Uh, many GPs are really well equipped to deal with menopause um, and some are not so confident. I'd like to see improved education of health professionals at undergraduate level and at postgraduate level. And I'd like to see more emphasis on menopause in, in GP training. Feels like you're burning from the inside. 64-year-old Corrine struggled with unpleasant symptoms for more than a decade before starting medication, concerned about a perceived cancer risk. Ten years on, she's still experiencing symptoms. I really had no idea as to what to expect. Uh, I thought it'd be gone by now, actually. I thought once your period stopped that, you know, you might feel some symptoms for a couple of years and then it would stop, but no, not yet. I'm hoping this year might be it. For a lot of women, uh, perimenopause symptoms come as a real shock. They don't really know what to expect. So when women start to get things like um, trouble sleeping at night or those hot flushes, sometimes a little bit of what we call brain fog, you, you lose that word, it can be really concerning and really distressing for some women. The typical Australian woman reaches menopause at 51 and may experience weight gain, irregular periods, joint pain, difficulty sleeping, tiredness, mood swings, an overactive bladder and vaginal dryness. If you're having really mild symptoms, some of these can be managed just through some um, simple lifestyle changes, like changing up your diet, really addressing what's causing you um, trouble when you're trying to sleep, doing things as simple as reducing the heat um, in your bedroom at night. To minimise the severity of symptoms, she recommends women exercise regularly, eat lots of leafy green vegetables, quit smoking, cut down on alcohol, and up their calcium intake. For women who have symptoms that bother them, for example really severe hot flushes or night sweats, we know that the most effective treatment is menopausal hormone therapy. Menopause hormone therapy, MHT, sometimes it's called hormone replacement therapy or HRT, um, can be really really effective for some women who are struggling with very bothersome symptoms. Not all women can take it, not all women want to take it, but it's something that um, can be offered to you and unfortunately though we see some GPs and some women who are really scared of using MHT because they've heard that MHT increases the risk of breast cancer. Now we know that this is a really complex story and that it's a very individual risk but we still have some people who are really afraid to take it when they don't need to be. So for women who are considering using HRT, it's important for them to know what their baseline risk of breast cancer is without HRT. So we developed this online tool um, to basically help women to work out what their personal risk of breast cancer is. For those not keen on medication, cognitive behavioural therapy and dietary tweaks can help manage mild symptoms. Vaginal estrogen can help people experiencing dryness in the area and there are other non-hormonal medications available to help. But asking questions is the most important place to start. I think you need to inform yourself as most young people do these days. Maybe our generation is a little bit more stoic and really I think that was maybe my problem. So I think we have a lot of stigma and we really need to shift 
the way society views menopause because it's too much caught up in really gendered ageism and I think we need to celebrate the fact that when we get to menopause we're incredibly wise, we know so much and we've got a third of our lives to really live um, a great life in rather than considering menopause as the end of everything.